I'm Brian Hernandez, and you're listening to Tips from the Team, where I sit down with U.S. pizza team members and mine them for pearls of wisdom about the pizza industry. Hello, and welcome to Tips from the Team. I'm Brian Hernandez, and this show allows me to sit down with some of the great members of the United States pizza team and kind of get the best little nuggets of wisdom that they have to offer, uh, something that they do really well that they really want the industry to know is working for them and can actually work for the rest of the industry. So today I've been able to corner Dan Uccello of Flo's Ristorante Pizzeria uh, up in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area, correct? That's correct. All right. Now, I, I actually wanted to talk with uh, Dan today because he's uh, started his new place that's uh, kind of a new concept in the area for them, uh, but it's uh, a Flo's Ristorante Pizzeria, but it's attached to a winery. So why don't you go ahead and tell us about this new venture? When did it start and, you know, how, you know, yeah. Why did you decide to do that? Sure. So uh, we opened uh, September of 2018. And uh, what I saw was uh, just uh, an overabundance of uh, great beer, really, but a lot of a lot of breweries in Grand Rapids, where you've been Beer City, USA for uh, a numerous amount of years. So I wanted to do something a little bit different. So uh, we teamed up with a winery in Michigan here called San Julian Winery. Um, they are some of the, the in my eyes, uh, some of the best uh, wines in Michigan. They're also the largest winery in Michigan. Um, and um, they, they just do a great job. So we wanted to do something different where it really kind of uh, paired well with a wood fire pizza. And uh, a lot of their wines are doing that for us. So um, it's a beautiful building. We remodeled the whole property. And... Uh, um, it has one front entrance, so you come in and you can either go to the left of the pizzeria or the right, you can go inside the winery. Uh, the winery is, uh, you can do wine tastings, uh, there's a lot of retail that you can purchase, uh, um, and you can also order takeout from the pizzeria that can get delivered right next door. So if you want to really enjoy um, uh, an appetizer while doing a wine tasting next door, you can certainly do that, or you can come and dine with us instead. All right, well, that leads me kind of into the first question, which I think you answered, which is uh, why wine and not craft beer? But you, you mentioned there's just kind of an overabundance in your area. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just think that we pretty much have a brewery in every corner that you go in Grand Rapids, which is cool. You know, if you like beer, it's a great thing. But um, unless you're one of the big uh, dogs like uh, Parent or Founders, uh, you kind of get lost in the mix. So um, it's really hard for a lot of the smaller ones to, to really do well. Okay. Well, it, it, I mean, when in the research that you were doing before opening this, was there a, a profit difference or was it merely just because there was just too much beer in the area? That's why you chose wine? Yeah. So there, well, on a number level, yes, there is a uh, profit difference. Uh, and uh, beer is actually cheaper to purchase. So um, you can make more money on beer. So like we run a 22% beer cost, but we run a 27% wine cost. Um, but that's pretty normal. And uh, it's uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it's kind of like the, the steakhouse um, concept where we are selling $8, $7 uh, wine, glasses of wine versus my 3 to $4 a glass of beer. So um, it, we're going to run, run a higher percentage, but we're actually taking more money to the bank when we're selling wine. Okay. And, uh, I, I mean, in the research that you were doing when you were getting ready to uh, open this place, is one easier to do than the other? Is beer easier than wine? or? Yeah. Um, well, uh, beer is uh, certainly easier only for one reason, because everybody understands it and everybody knows what a beer is. Um, you know, wine, most people really only know two things, that there is – white and red wine. Um, so, um, you know, but most people know what a lager is. Most people know what an IPA is uh, um, and so on. So it's, uh, yeah, beer is easier to do, but, um, you know, it doesn't mean that it's better. And um, so we, we really just focus on wine and wood fire pizzas here. Um, we still sell beer. We have four beers on tap. Uh, they're normally all of our local stuff. Uh, um, but, um, Mostly, we just focus on um, selling great wine, and uh, that's uh, that's probably fifty percent at least. I would I would say fifty to sixty percent of our beverage sales is coming from wine. 
it's going to lead me to another question later, but I mean, let's just, I want to keep these in order. So what is the first thing that somebody should uh, do when trying to start a wine program like you have? I mean, is it the market share research, uh, sourcing the wine distributor, or does, does that come later? Sure. I mean, you, like you, 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 phys- uh, you partnered with a physical winery. So is it, um, is that something where I, that's my next question, I guess, too, is that, um, are they separate entities? I mean, what, what's the first thing you should do? And then, uh, kind of take us from there. Yeah. So we're a hundred percent, two different businesses. Um, the only area that we have shared within the physical, um, area is our restroom. So we have the shared air common area where the restrooms are shared, but, uh, um, yeah, we're two different, uh, businesses. And, you know, the one thing that I would always say is not every area in the country, of this concept will work. So do your research first, um, put together a business plan, I would never open up a business without putting a business plan uh, together so I can check what my market share is. And um, really, when you do a business plan, anybody that's put one together, it will literally tell you what your customer base is going to be like, who's really going to frequent your restaurant, um, how often do people in the area go out to eat, et cetera. So um, especially with this, is it was such a different concept for us. We really did our homework on that. We uh, made sure that we understood um, exactly who was going to be coming in, what the check average was going to be, um, how often, you know, we can expect to see um, a, uh, a customer. So, yeah, I mean, we have a 35 to $40 per person check average here, which is exactly what we planned on to having. Uh, so if, uh, and that's based on a pizza, an appetizer, and uh, two glasses of wine uh, per person. If, if, so if you go to the winery, you can order takeout from the restaurant and it comes over there. And I assume that's vice versa as well. If you, you, 100%. You um, obviously. Or, well, we, do you, do you, that's what I was wanting to ask is I, um, if somebody orders a glass of wine in your restaurant, have you purchased that wine and are you selling it uh, for profit or is it coming directly from uh, San Julian Winery next door? Nope. So what we do is we worked out a, uh, we negotiated, I should say, a, uh, a really great discount. So we actually buy direct. We skip the distributor and we buy direct from the winery. Um, and uh, we, like I said, we um, we really negotiated a great program where we get a really deep discount buying um, direct. So we bring it into our pizzeria and we sell it by the glass or the bottle. Um, normally the, the rule of thumb is that your first glass of wine should pay for the whole bottle. You know, that, uh, and that's kind of uh, where our price structure is, is uh, where uh, the first glass of wine that we sell pays for that whole bottle we just purchased. And that's where that about 25 to 27% wine cost comes in because you get about four glasses. Um, if everyone's doing the right pours, uh, we get about four glasses of wine per bottle. Well, I like how you said right pours. Uh, I'm going to get to that here shortly. But, uh, you know, it, everybody understands beer. Not a lot of people fully understand wine. Is this concept, is this a concept that people understand or is there a little bit of customer training that has to happen um, as far as drinking wine and pairing it? Yeah, it's 100% customer training. People come in and, like I said before, they really only know that there's red and white wine. They have no idea what it pairs with. They have no idea what they even like. And believe it or not, every single person that comes through these doors likes something different. So just because a nice red wine pairs well with my uh, Molto Carne pizza, let's say, um, it doesn't mean that you're going to like it. it. Everyone's got a different palate. So wine is 100% that. And um, so there's a lot of training that we do on our end to our employees. And uh, that I'm, I'm also a firm believer that everybody should do what they're great at. And uh, we're great at making Sicilian food. So we want to focus on our food. And so we also worked out programs with San Julian where every single shift a- after the shift, uh, our employees are allowed to go next door and do a free wine tasting. So <laughs> they go next door, they do um, their wine tasting, which is a, a six, two ounce pour. So it's about a glass and a half of a, a wine. And uh, they're getting educated every single day on those wines and what they pair with at flows. So we do that literally every single day. How fancy do you need to get? Do you need a sommelier? Or is it, um, obviously somebody needs to be knowledgeable. Is it easier to hire somebody to teach people or... 
pay to send everybody somewhere to get educated all at once. I mean, I, you guys don't have a sommelier necessarily at uh, Flows, but next nope. door, they, I assume they would. They do, exactly. So um, every – depending on how our turnover is doing in the front of the house especially is when we have uh, what we call team meetings. So we will call team meetings where we actually invite a general manager from San Julian to come in. He is also very versatile on what our food tastes like. They eat here every day. Um, and uh, so he's able to coach our staff on what taste is great and what pairs well with what wine and our food. Um, so, yeah, we do that about every two months. And then, like I said, every single day, then we we encourage our staff to go next door and do these wine tastings. Because wine tastings, even when you do them on a personal level, they're really an educational uh, experience because uh, if you have the time and if you're interested in it, you know, and we pushed a lot of that. So when we go next door and we do these wine tasting, um, their, their staff is, that's what they're focusing on is saying, okay, this Pinot Grigio will pair great with this item on your menu. Um, so we, we do that every single day. And then every other month we call them in and we have a team meeting where their general manager actually leads our staff meeting and coaches them on all of their wines and, um, and what pairs well with them. Well, yeah. I mean, that's definitely great because there's nothing worse than when a customer asks uh, a server, you know, how does this wine taste? And they say, I don't know. Right. Exactly. You gotta be educated because how can you sell it if you don't know it? So yep. And again, um, we're going back to, you know, we, we were doing a lot of training with our customers. So um, we have to be educated in what we're serving because the customer most of the time is not. And it's our job to make sure that by the time they leave here, they understand what they just drank and why it pairs well with what they just had. How do you pair wine with pizza? I mean, is it, is it like a toppings plus a vintage? Um, you know, is it regions with the cheese or, I mean, is it just like a, a, a red wine with a white pizza or white wine with a red pizza? For the most part, it kind of is. Yeah. But again, going back to, you know, my statement earlier, everybody's different. Everyone's got a different palate. So we are going to always tell you what the traditional is, which, okay. is, uh, you know, your red, you know, will taste great with your red sauce um, and, uh, and so on. But uh, again, it doesn't mean that you're going to enjoy it. And at the end of the day, we're in the business of making people happy. And, uh, you know, they have to be happy. They have to enjoy what they just uh, drank and what they just ate. So we will coach our, our, our uh, customers on what we think will go well with it. And that's where a lot of our, uh, like, um, we have flights. And that's where a lot of the times when the customer can't make up their mind is where we say, you know, we have flights. Is it worth it? Is it cost effective to do flights? If you do them, are you putting out, you know, four or five wines and giving them two or three small pizzas to kind of mess around with? I mean, is there a deal like this? I mean, how do you guys manage flights? Uh, at flows. Yeah. So what we usually do is we will let our customers uh, first and foremost pick what they're hungry for. And then uh, we will uh, co train them into what what we think will pair well with that. And uh, are they cost effective um, depending on how you price them out and depending on what wines they are uh, uh, buying? Yes, they can totally be cost effective. Again, we serve six two ounce pours and we sell them for ten dollars so about a glass and a half for ten dollars um that's about where we need to be for to meet our cost and we sell them all day every day so yeah when people are uh, you know undecided on what they want to drink with their meal we say these six would go great with it and they'll buy the flight they'll hopefully find a winner and by the end of that flight they're either buying another glass of that wine that they really enjoyed or even uh, we, we also sell uh, wine to go. So you can also buy a bottle to go if because uh, the winery closes earlier than us. So a lot of the times people come in and they want to go next door and buy a bottle of wine, but the winery's closed. We're able to fill that need. Okay. Well, I'm definitely symbiotic partnership there. But um, so do you not have a deal that has like your flight of wine that's like the ten dollars, but that's something more that has pizzas, or do you, you you just let them order and then you suggest the flight? You upsell the flight, basically. That's correct. That's okay. exactly right. So flows is a partnership with uh, San Julian. It's a two side of the building, uh, winery yeah. and pizzeria. What made you go with that format? And um, I was going to say how much individual brand identity is maintained by both, but it's pretty much two separate identities. But why didn't you want to just 
partner with them and get a good price on wine and bring it in and just be flows. Why did you need that winery on site? Well, I think we could all agree that um, you need people coming in through your front doors or at least driving by. Traffic is a big uh, is a big thing when it comes to our business plans. You know, how much traffic do we have on the road? I mean, you know, what businesses are next to us and how much traffic are they bringing in? So uh, St. Julian Winery, uh, because of their wine club being so big, uh, they push about 1,500 people through their doors every single week just because people are coming in for their wine, their wine club members. So they're coming in because it's a uh, case sale week or they're coming in because uh, they also get a free uh, glass of wine every single day. As and is part this, of, I'm sorry, is this the one that's right next door to you? This yeah. One? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, um, so it, uh, I mean, who wouldn't want that many people coming through the front doors and that are essentially their fan base that, Oh, look at that. You know, let's go try the restaurant. And now they're dining with us. So we, uh, we piggyback a lot off of that. And then because we are local, this is their first Grand Rapids location, but this is our fourth one. So we have a great reputation in the area and our name is well known. So they also piggyback off of us and people coming to flows and then say, Oh wow, there's a winery next door. Let's go, you know, let's go wine tasting. So it, it's just a great partnership. And, uh, um, so that's why we decided to do it that way is to really kind of, uh, uh take advantage on both sides of each other's customer and fan base. Who approached who on this? Um, was it just guys kind of met in a, in a Kroger parking lot or something? Yeah, no, not quite. But, uh, so the Braganini family, um, which owns San Julian winery, um, they, their son, um, is, uh, one of my brother's uh, really good friends. And uh, they, um, they wanted to expand into this area, but they also were a little bit, you know, maybe hesitant to go on their own, just like we were with a new concept. So um, we, uh, we decided that they wanted to do food with their winery. They thought that, you know, by having food either attached or inside of it, that it would increase their sales. You know, people could make a, a whole, you know, couple hours experience instead of going in and buying a couple bottles of wine and heading out. So, uh, um, but they also, they, they, we have the same mindset. They want to do wine and that's it. They don't want to mess with food. Same thing with us. We want to do food. We don't want to produce wine. So uh, it, it just worked out where we, uh, we sat down over a beer kind of thing and we started discussing all the details and what it would entail. And it took me about four months to, um, to really develop this concept and what I wanted the menu to look like and what kind of wines uh, that we were going to pair with our food and what they offer. So it took quite a while and uh, we released new menus uh, three to four times a year. I try to do it four times, one per season, uh, but uh, at least three where we match a lot of their new wines because they do have seasoned wines. So um, we, uh, we try to kind of keep up with what they have going on. Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of how it started. It was uh, they wanted uh, a food establishment to partner up with. We wanted somebody to partner up with on the beverage end that could really focus on uh, on our training. And um, and so here we are basically a year later. Are there some people, because you said you obviously you guys both have your own customer base or your fans. Uh, or are there some people that are surprised either on the wine end or the pizzeria end when they show up? Because I, I, Every single day. you have a giant – ass wine barrel and is the your facade out yeah front, right? <laughs> yeah so that was uh that was a very unique uh and and i always anything i do in business uh obviously it has to make sense financially first of all but uh, then i try to attach my personal uh um my personal uh you know love for it essentially so when it comes to our pizzas the last you know the last three summers i spent in sicily trying to really learn how they make sicilian pizza you know, what kind of dough and, uh, you know, the fermentation and with the sauce, et cetera, the tomatoes. Um, and uh, one of the biggest things is since I grew up, there is a winery right when you, so you, right when you land in, in uh, Palermo, which uh, is uh, where the airport is, I'm from a little town called Partinico. So when you get on the highway and you get off on the Partinico exit, there is a winery and their main entrance is a wine barrel. And that's what I remembered it as a kid. Um, it was kind of, you know, coming home, you know, and that was the first thing that you saw when you got off the highway. 
So when we were building this thing, you know, I said, I got to do this. I, I got to make the, the, the entrance a big wine barrel, just like I remember back home. And uh, it's not exactly like it, but the concept is there. And, uh, um, and, and that's how that wine barrel came along, you know, came along, essentially, was really a personal attachment to it. Well, it's definitely an eye catcher from the from the road too. So yeah. something that's just going to draw people it's in. Huge, just... I think uh, it's uh, uh, thirty feet tall. Thirty feet tall. It's huge. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you know I just picture the Griswolds on you know cross country tour and they stop to take a picture. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. I mean that's definitely good. It gets you know foot traffic from people who just might be passing through as well and then become lifelong fans. So yeah, we're um, right by the trail and right off the highway. So we get a lot of bikers that'll stop by and kind of uh, grab a, grab a glass of wine and an appetizer and get back on the White Pine Trail. Um, or even off the highway, we get a ton of people that are traveling that just stop quickly and uh, know that there's a winery and a pizzeria and that's exactly what they were looking for for a quick bite to eat and a glass of wine. Well, it sounds like uh, you've stumbled upon the Cracker Barrel model. Um, I'm going to be seeing Flo San Julian wineries off of every highway exit from here to Vegas, I assume. I'm hoping. But hey, you know, it, it's actually kind of uh, um, our, uh, our, our plan is to grow uh, together. Um, they have four other tasting rooms that we're also looking into putting our concept in there. Um, we're not quite sure if it'll work the same exact way um, because of space, um, but um, we're, we're looking to partner up with them and the rest of the tasting rooms over the next few years. Um, we also don't want to flood the market either, so we, we won't be putting one of these up within 60 miles of each other. So that is uh, our business plan that we agreed on you know, from when we first agreed to this concept, and I think it's a great thing because we're both so unique in what we're doing that uh, it's uh, it's something that that needs to stay that way instead of flooding the market where every ten miles or five miles you know you have another location type of thing. Well, that, I mean that absolutely makes sense. It's a very smart uh, caveat to put in that contract for sure. I did want to ask you about you had talked about you know because they have seasonal wines that come out, um, and I mean do. You, is there a, I don't know if you had a seasonal menu to begin with, but I mean, was there, after finding that, is there a concerted effort to come up with a seasonal menu, change it, you know, every three, four months um, to pair with that? And is it, I mean, is it using seasonal stuff from the Michigan area or, you know, local, anything like that? within? Yeah. Months? So what we have is we focus a lot on, uh, we have a set menu and then, Every season will change just like, you know, we'll add a couple summer pizzas, a couple summer salads, you know, a couple summer appetizers. Uh, but, um, you know, 99% of it stays the same all year long. And then we do every, and it's as often as we can get our hands on the ingredients, we do features. So we sometimes will run a feature where, you know, a local farmer has got something that we can use and uh, we go down the road and buy the ingredient and uh, we're able to use it only for the week. Or maybe he's got enough of it for uh, to last us the whole month. Uh, so we do features, and normally we try to include one entree, and it could be a pizza or a pasta or anything else, really, just an entree. Um, and then uh, we do one appetizer, and we always try to do um, a uh, featured drink. So um, our general manager, actually, at this location, um, he was voted best bartender in Grand Rapids uh, a few years ago. Um, he's very great with crafting cocktails. Um, and, uh, that is something that it's kind of in his, uh, in his wheelhouse where that's what he does is, uh, is the cocktails are his thing. So yeah, we, we, we change it up on a weekly or a monthly, depending on what we can get our hands on the ingredients, but then our regular menu, um, like I said, 90% of the items stay the same. All right. So, I mean, do you think that, uh, this partnership with, uh, San Julian has actually helped you guys be more creative and in, in trying to figure out. Um, I mean, it sounds like you already had a seasonal thing going, but, um, I mean, did, now do you think differently about the seasonal? It's like, instead of just coming up with something that's available, are you trying to come up with something that's available, but we'll go with this wine? Do you think about the wines when making these recipes sometimes? hundred percent. Um, you know, the, they, they're really great about communicating with us. Hey, this is you know, a new wine that is going to be coming out, um, you know, on this date. And this is what it pairs really well with. So, uh, again, uh, our, our general manager here is, uh, is very involved when it comes to that. 
and uh, they they both communicate. And uh, yeah, Matt then just goes uh, goes to work on uh, what he uh, he thinks is going to pair well with the wine that they are about to introduce in 30 days or or a couple weeks. All right. Well, just an off topic. Not well, it's on topic, but just a, a, a tangent. Uh, do you guys uh, how um, empowered are your employees, kitchen employees, to come up with new recipes? Do you guys? Uh, encourage that do, you know do you listen to them you know somebody says hey i got something really cool i want you to try i mean yeah they're... our What's... features are 100 percent them okay so um our features uh we let uh we have what we call capo pizzaioli uh, which are kind of like our lead pizza makers right that's what it translates to and uh um we uh we let them uh do their thing obviously we approve so uh, i'll get a call every you know couple weeks and say hey dan come and try this uh, item out um you know we're, we're thinking about featuring it and i come in you know they prepare for me if i approve that's great we move forward or if i think that there needs to be a tweak to it that's what we do um, but most of the times uh, these guys do a great job we have a couple really good guys that are really into crafting new items and uh um, and also, you know, on a business level, it gives your employees a sense of ownership as well, you know, that that is their item that is being featured. And especially if it sells really well, which we all know that features in the restaurant, sometimes they just, you know, you think it's great, but no one else does. And then that's okay too, you know, but uh, especially if it sells really well, it just gives them a level of pride that you, I mean, you can't, you can't replace. It's, you know, something that they love. And, and has that, um, not the attitude changed, but I mean, are they, they're thinking more about instead of just creating something that they like, but creating something that will go well with a, a new wine? I mean, are, are, is everybody um, embracing this concept and, and thinking about that when they're creating new recipes? 100%. Yeah, everybody's on the same mission here. And, uh, um, you know, we have our mission statement that is uh, – plastered literally right on our wall and uh um, that is what we tell them to do you know is say every time that you are about to develop a a recipe or a feature that you want to run make sure you pay attention to that mission statement and that it's something that that fits that if it doesn't fit that you know probably you should tweak it to make it fit that all right well then the last couple questions here um and this has kind of i think been answered uh, just through our talk uh which has been great by the way thank you so much for getting up so early and absolutely giving me your well, time it's, but it's all good if, if someone wants to go this route and you know partner with uh um even you know even if it's a brewery or winery anything like that do you recommend rebranding to a new concept name um you know as a conjoined concept or just keep it separate like you like you're doing, you know, so there's no confusion between this new concept and your existing pizzerias. I mean, is it worth it to come up with a new concept and rename it? Um, that, that is a, that is a tough question because, um, you know, if you're looking to add revenue, uh, such as bringing in a winery or a brewery, wherever it may be, um, you are probably not doing that well anyways. Right. And, uh, uh, so you should probably rebrand to the whole brand new concept. Um, you know, if things are well, why add the headache type of thing, right? You know, why add to change things around? So um, that's kind of how I feel about that is that if you're, if you're looking to make this big of a step to add a whole new partner to your business, um, that must mean that, you know, uh, maybe not in all cases, you know, maybe you own the real estate and you got, you know, next door, you got 4,000 square feet that you're trying to fill in, and and that, that'll be a great uh, add on to your building. Um, but in most cases, I feel like, that if you're going to make such a dramatic change to your business, um, it means that you're probably not doing that well as it is. So yeah, I 100% think that you should rebrand when it comes to changing what you're already doing. Um, because uh, one, um, you know, it's going to bring people back in, um, you know, maybe people that hadn't dined with us uh, because you didn't, uh, Maybe they, they didn't enjoy their experience and now they will because there's a whole new concept added to it. Um, so I 100% think that it, it's, it changes case to case, but uh, it should also be a 100% rebrand. And one of the biggest things I would say is, uh, you know, whatever brewery or if you're looking at a winery, which uh, I think it's kind of like the next big thing um, is, uh, Make sure that they're, you know, they got a good reputation, that they're well known in the area. Um, you know, we went for the biggest and the baddest when we, you know, when we partnered up with San Julian. 
They're literally the biggest winery in the state of Michigan. No one else pushes more wine than San Julian does. All right. Well, I guess the, the final burning question that everybody's got on their mind is, Dan Uccello, what is your favorite pizza from Flo's paired with a favorite wine from San Julian? Sure. So my favorite pizza from Flo's, uh, wood, uh, Flo's Wood Fired, would be our Molto Carne. It's, uh, it's a – You meat mentioned lover. that before. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, the meat lovers or lots of meat, right? Yeah, a, a Molto Carne means a lot, a lot of meat, right? Um, and um, so – and I, I like to pair that with a really easy drinking wine, um, and it's called Cock of the Walk. It's, um, it's a great it, – it is a fun – it's kind of a funny name, right? But uh, it's, uh, it's a great drinking wine. It's uh, a blend of uh, different red wines. And uh, uh, it, it's, it just goes really well with any, like, a meatballs. Uh, like, we have a, an appetizer called Franca's Meatballs, and, uh, which is just meatballs, tomato sauce, onions, peppers, and melted mozzarella cheese. It goes well with that, you know, really good with that. Um, we have our Campagnola, which is kind of um, like our – deluxe pizza so to speak our version of it um and it's got some meats and it's got some veggies and that goes w well with it but my favorite one will be the cock of the walk with our multi carton all right well and i'm glad you brought up the the meatball um recipe as well because i didn't want to just make a pizza because i know you guys are full on italian restaurant as well yep. um so uh so basically what i'm hearing cock of the walk with a lot of hearty meats yeah uh, something just fulfilling so well, I mean, Dan, this, I, I don't know if there's much more we can ask about what you're doing there without you giving away your secrets, but sure. I, I definitely want to uh, thank you so much for sitting down on Tips from the Team. You know, where can people find you guys online, social media, websites, and so on? Yeah, so if you go to flowscollectionmi.com, um, that's a great way to get to know us. It's our splash page, and you can find all of our different concepts that we have within our restaurant group. Um, and uh, you'll find a link to our sports bar page, which we're an Italian sports bar. We, you'll find a link to our pizzeria page, which is um, just a, a takeout and delivery concept. And you'll find links to Flo's Wood Fired as well as uh, Catering Concepts. Catering Concepts is our full service catering company. We'll do anything from a 25 person uh, office get together to a 500 people wedding. Uh, yeah, that's a, I think that's a different, uh, video. I, I completely forgot about the flows concept. So I do want yeah. to talk to you again about that, but that's a great place where everybody can find yep. pretty much Flo's everything collection. you guys do. Yep. Flows, flows collection, mi.com. All right, man. Well, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for your time. This is tips from the team. I'm your host, Brian Hernandez. Been sitting with the one, the only, the great Dan Uccello of flows Ristorante pizzeria. Uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, now partnering with San Julian Winery, correct? That's right. San Julian, right? Not St. Julian. St. Julian, yep. It is. Okay, so uh, we got to re-record this whole thing because I've been saying it wrong. <laughs> San I, couldn't, I couldn't hear you. I didn't know. Uh, it's all right. Yeah, that's um, it's okay. In the, in the text, it says St. Julian. Yes. Um, yeah, I did want to throw out a shout-out to Nancy uh, from Harrison High School. I uh, went to high school with her. She She's partnered great. with him. It's insane. Uh, this pizza world and winery world is very small. So, Nancy, you're doing a great job. I can't wait to get up to Dan's place and uh, have some of that wine. So, Dan, we look forward to it. Yeah, well, it's all comped, right? 100%. You guys heard that here. 100%. Yes, it's true. All right. all right, Dan, thank you so much. This is Tips from the Team. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for having me.